Isichas Chelek Yud Beis, Book Twelve, the portion of Bahar, Sicha One. This is a a Sicha where the Rebbe calls our attention to a uh, small nuances in the explanation of a pasuk. The way the Torah's Kohanim, the book Torah's Kohanim, is a book of Mishnaic um, Medrash put together on compiled about the book of Ayikra. And this, so it's uh, it dates back, it origins back to the time, you know, around the time of the Mishnah. It Torah's Kohanim means what's told the Torah of the Kohanim, the book of, of Leviticus, the book of, of Ayikra in general, <coughs> speaks very much about Karbanis and the job of the Kohanim, the Beis Amigdash. And uh, the way that Teres Kernim learns and the way Rashi learns, and although they seem to be saying the same thing, we'll see they're very, very different. As we go through the Sikha, which seems to be picking up on a very small nuance, we'll also see that this has quite a uh, quite a great application to us. Even in our understanding of the Kiddush and of the Shabbos Davening, we'll, get, we'll glean some pointers and a very fundamental um, uh, Hashkafa, a very fundamental philosophical perspective on how we view the, the, the Shabbos in general. Okay, let's jump into it. So the Torah starts in the portion of Bahar. Speak to the Bnei Yisrael, says the Torah, tell them when you come to the land of Israel, which I give to you, the land shall rest as a Shabbos. Six years plant your field, six years prune your vineyards, gather in your produce. In other words, Work your fields as usual. On the seventh year, it shall be a Shabbos for the land, a rest for the land, a Shabbos for Hashem. Your field you shall not plant, and your uh, vineyard you shall not prune. So we have here twice the word was said that the, the Shabbos should rest, the, the, the earth should rest as a Shabbos to Hashem. Does the Rebbe, in the Teras Kenim, on the second time it says Shabbos to Hashem, the Teras Kenim says, the same way it says, Picking up on the word Shabbos for Hashem, it says the same way it says on the Shabbos of the week. You see, there's a Shabbos, we're going to call it Shabbos Bereshis, which means the Shabbos as it was pertaining to the days of creation, the seventh day. And there's the Shabbos of years, which is the Shemitah, the sabbatical year. So, Teras Kohenim says, it says Shabbos Lashem, that is the same words that are used when it, in the Ten Commandments in the book of Shemais, Hashem says that on the seventh day it should be a Shabbos for Hashem. And um, yeah, so the Torah Kenim says the same way it says it about Shabbos Bereshis, Shabbos to Hashem, so it says here about the Shviyas, the seventh year, it should be a Shabbos to Hashem. Rashi also brings seemingly the same Rashi, but he brings it on the first time the Pasuk says Shabbos to Hashem. And he says, for the sake of, he quotes, in his title, Shabbos Lashem, it's a Shabbos for Hashem, for the, for, the, for the sake of Hashem. The same way it says by Shabbos Bereshis. Were you just to read these two things, the Torah's Kernim, the way it is in Medrash, and Rashi, where he seems, what he's quoting, it seems to be the same thing exactly. But there are some fundamental differences which will lead the Rebbe to say that they're both going and telling us totally different things. Let's build up to it. First question is that the Rebbe points out the differences not a question, but there's a difference. The difference is, Rashi says right away, Shabbos Lashem, Rashi explains what that means, for the sake of Hashem. Then he says the same way it says about the Shabbos, the weekly Shabbos. The Torah Kenim never said the words Lashem Hashem. The Torah Kenim first said, same way it says, by Shabbos, uh, it says here, Shabbos Lashem, the same, uh, sorry, the same way in Shabbos Bereshis, it also says Shabbos to Hashem, just like it says here, Shabbos to Hashem. Different nuance there. It doesn't say L'Shem Hashem. He just correlates the two. On the other hand, uh, the Tereska, if, if you think that the Torah is trying to speak perhaps shorter, no, Rashi here is actually, in a way, speaking shorter. Rashi said, for the sake of Hashem, just like it says in Shabbos Bereshis. The Torah Kenim was a bit more wordy. The Kenim says, Shabbos Bereshis, it says Shabbos to Hashem. Similarly to here also, by the seventh year, Shabbos to Hashem. So it's more wordy in another way. So it's a change. So we have to understand why that change. Also, as we mentioned, Teres Kernim takes the drasha on the second time the Pasuk says Shabbos Hashem. Rashi comments on the first time. Okay. So first of all, this leads us to understand uh, something the Rebbe establishes in many places, that there's a big difference between Rashi's commentary and the agenda that Rashi has in his commentary to what other forms of commentary, in this case the Teras Kernim, which is a halachic-based 
commentary. The Mishnah, the Torah's Kernim, which is, as I said, Mishnaic form of teachings learned from the Torah, is telling us, is, is there to teach us halachas. What can we gain from these psukim that can be founded on and teach us in, in, in the daily application of this in halacha? Rashi, as sta- explicitly stated in the beginning of his Pirush, he always comes to say the pshute shalmikah, the simple meaning of the, the posuk. Just parenthetically, by that very definition, the Rashi says, I only come to explain the simple commentary. From this, we obviously infer as well, you cannot read the Torah without reading Rashi, because then you won't even get the simple commentary. But Rashi doesn't come to embellish on the simple commentary. He comes to explain pshat, pshut teshomika, the pshat, what is the simple meaning of the verses. So based on the different agendas that each of these pirushim has, there's going to be a vast difference between what they're trying to point out in correlating the Shabbos of the sabbatical year, correlating it back to the Shabbos Bereshis, the Shabbos of the weekly Shabbos, which both have the same words, Shabbos Lashem. So some explain that what Rashi means to say, L'Shem Hashem, for the sake of Hashem, is to tell us that don't think you're doing this sabbatical year in order to rest the land so that the land should be able to rejuvenate and recoup some of its nutrients. And there is such a concept in farming that you let the, the, the farm lie fallow. In order it should regroup, in order it should uh, become, uh, um, uh, the nutrients should should come back in a stronger form. No, L'Shem Hashem. Ask the Rebbe, if that's really what Rashi came here to explain, so why doesn't he explain it earlier when, when we're talking about Shabbos, in the Ten Commandments where Hashem says, make a Shabbos for Hashem, Rashi should also have said, Hashem for the sake of Hashem, not just to unplug. Again, a parenthetic note, I don't know if in the time of Rashi people felt the need to unplug so much, so they did. They, also, they worked very, very hard, harder than us. But today there's a notion out there in the world, they've learned from our Shabbos, hey, Unplug for one day a week. It's a good, great thing. So why wouldn't Rashi explain also about the Shabbos every week that it's like when the Torah says Shabbos Hashem, it's a Shabbos for the sake of Hashem. So unless you say that it's so simple, such a, it's obvious. Shabbos Hashem, make the Shabbos because Hashem said so, not because you have any other agenda because you want to just rest. If that's so simple when it comes to the weekly Shabbos and Rashi doesn't explain it there, so what's the big deal over here? And if there is, if there is a reason to explain it, is somehow you would think that uh, farmers uh, are more into resting their field; it's more widespread than taking a day off. So for Shabbos, in the Aser Sadir, it's no problem. The weekly Shabbos, Rashi doesn't have to say anything. It's obvious. You need to do it for Hashem. Here, somehow, we need to tell you do it for Hashem, but. He doesn't need to bring any proof the same way it says by Shabbos Bereshis. Just say here, it's a Shabbos Hashem, you need to do it for Hashem. Rashi, uh, Rashi has, has, has other precedents when it says, take for me, Teruma, the word li. Rashi said, li lishmi, for my sake, take it for me. So that's a very simple reading into the verse. Shabbos la Hashem, when it says it should be a year of Shabbos, to Hashem means for the sake of Hashem, we don't need to bring proofs from somewhere else. And also, if that was the intention, it could have just said la Hashem. The title that Rashi brings is always very important as well. Rashi is the one that chooses the title. We find it in our Chumashim usually in bold. Those titles were also chosen by Rashi. And if the title is on Shabbos Lashem, it means that it's not just the word for Hashem that's being explained. Do it for the sake of Hashem and not for your own sake. But the whole Shabbos is also important here. So therefore, what this is telling us is really that, um, not to explain the word Lashem per se, but to explain what is the what is the meaning here of the entire statement Shabbos Lashem? What is there to be explained here? So if you read the verse, remember Rashi always explains why there seems to be a redundancy. If there se- seems to be a redundancy in the wording of the pasuk, Rashi will explain that. The pasuk says, "Speak to the Bnei Yisrael and tell them when you come to the land which I've given to you, the land shall rest a Shabbos for Hashem." Why not just say the land shall rest for the for Hashem? That Shabbos for Hashem seems to be an additional insert to tell us something. And therefore Rashi comes and says, one second, it's referring us back to a similar place where it said the same word, Shabbos Lashem, the weekly Shabbos in the Ten Commandments. Now, remember, the Torah's Kiranim 
picked up on the on the Shabbos Lashem and explained the second time it's mentioned in the Torah. That's because he doesn't, the Torah's Kenim isn't coming to explain simple commentary of the verse. Torah's Kenim is coming to tell us halacha. The simple reading of the verse, it doesn't bother him the first time. The second time, why would you say the second time? That already halachically has implications. And in a drasha, in expounding the Pasuk, on a halachic basis, the Torah's Kenim picks up on the second time that it says Shabbos Lashem. Now, the Torah's Kerenim didn't say what he means. He says, it says here, the same way it says in Shabbos, the weekly Shabbos, Shabbos for Hashem, it says here also in the sabbatical year, Shabbos for Hashem. What does that mean? What is the correlation? What, what, what's the halachic implication there? So, first of all, it, it seems to be saying that the Shabbos of the sabbatical year is similar to the Shabbos of every week. And perhaps, or not perhaps, what the Rebbe says, it's telling us not vice versa. It's not that the Shabbos of the week is similar to the Shabbos in year. It's vice versa. What does that mean? The Ravid, in his commentary on the Teres Kerenim, you know, we know the Ravid because he has also a commentary on the Rambam. So the Ravid has a commentary on the Teres Kerenim. And he says what the Teres Kerenim is coming to tell us is to tell us that the concept of adding time before the seventh year of Shemitah and after is actually not a, a concept that is spoken about here in the Pasuk. It's not min ha-teira, it's not mid so why not, from this Pasuk? Because what would we possibly think Possibly, if the land is supposed to rest, in order for land to rest, you really need to make sure you haven't planted anything there in the, in advance of the seventh year. Because if you've done planting, then the farmer may be resting, because coming Rosh Hashanah of the seventh year, the beginning of the seventh year, he may refrain from working, but the land is still going to be working. If you planted something a month before, the land is going to be you know, cooking, so to speak, and producing that produce. So therefore, one would think it makes sense that if the land has to rest, as the Pasuk seems to indicate, the the land shall rest, it would seem that the land needs to rest, and therefore, for some time before, you need to refrain from working the land. So it shouldn't be in operation on the seventh year. <coughs> However, when it comes to Shabbos, the daily Shabbos, the weekly Shabbos, there is no such obligation that we need to stop working before, some time period before the Shabbos, any considerable time period before the Shabbos. There is an obligation that we learn about Yom Kippur. We need to add from the mundane day to the holy day. It's called Tosefet. We add to the Yom Kippur, and we add a little bit to the Shabbos, but it's, as the Rebbe points out in the footnotes, very rich footnotes here, that it's just a little, it's a little amount. It's not really... Um, really we need to also make sure we don't come into the Shabbos at the exact split second because our timings are never one million percent accurate. And we need to add a, a drop, but that's not a considerable addition. Shabbos starts when Shabbos starts. Sunset, we start Shabbos. Uh, the stars come out, nightfall, we finish Shabbos. So when it comes to the seventh year, if the land has to has to has to rest, says that I would, the Teres Kerenim is saying perhaps we would think we have to add before the seventh year and not to work the land. Comes this word, these words, Shabbos Lashem. It's a Shabbos Lashem. The same words used when it tells us about Shabbos Bereishis, the Shabbos of the days of the week, and it tells us no, same way the Shabbos of the days of the week. There is not from the Torah, there's no biblical law that you have to add to the Shabbos. Similarly, in the in the seventh year, it's also like the Shabbos Bereshis. That's what this passage is telling us. Shabbos Lashem, Shabbos Lashem. A sabbatical year, same thing it says by the sabbatical day. Same way there, Mida Iraisa from the Torah, we don't have to add. Similarly here, we don't have to add. The land does not need to remain fallow. The farmer may not work with the land. So, that's why the Torah's Kenim says, the same way it says Shabbos by Shabbos Bereshis, that same way it says Shabbos in the seventh year. 
learn this way, not the other way. We're learning the Shabbos of the sabbatical year from a law that applies by the Shabbos during the day. Okay, that's what the Torah's canon is saying. Allah Rashi, however, Rashi is telling us pshat. What is Rashi telling us? Rashi is telling us that it has to be taka, l'shem Hashem, it has to be for the sake of Hashem. The Shabbos has to be for the sake of Hashem, the same way the Shabbos that we do every week is in order to remember that Hashem rested. What is the, what is what is so important here to emphasize that? Well, what would we think otherwise? Well, here's what we would think. And here's why the Torah has to say Shabbos Lashem and why Rashi has to correlate it, has to relate it back to the Shabbos Bereshis. First, let's understand when we use this concept Shabbos Bereshis, some of you may be familiar with the first Shabbos of the year. We call Shabbos Bereshis, right after Simchas because we read the portion of Bereshis. But actually, Shabbos Bereshis is a term that we find uh, particularly in, in the regard to counting the Omer. Everybody's seen it because it's in a Rashi. Rashi says, when the Torah says, Mimacharas HaShabbos, start counting the Omer the day after the Shabbos, says Rashi. What does that mean? If it means Shabbos Bereshis, in other words, the Shabbos that started at the creation, Bereshis means at the beginning, the Shabbos that started at the beginning because of the six days of beginning, where Hashem rested on the seventh day, if counting the Omer needs to be the day after that Shabbos, in other words, the weekly Shabbos, then the Torah didn't tell us when to start doing that. Which Shabbos? There's, there's 50 plus Shabbos every year. Shabbos Bereshis. Again, we're used to calling Shabbos Bereshis, the, the Shabbos we read the portion of Bereshis, but really every Shabbos is Shabbos Bereshis because it's the Shabbos. Actually, why is it called Shabbos Bereshis? Says the Rebbe, why is it taka called Shabbos Bereshis, not the Shabbos of days? We have the Shabbos of years, the Shemitah year, so we should have the Shabbos of days, the Shabbos of days, it's the seventh day. Why do we call it Shabbos Bereshis? The reason, says the Rebbe, we call it Shabbos Bereshis, takes us to another discussion, which is that really, in looking at the reason for Shabbos, look at the first set of set, uh, uh, not the first set, the first time the Aseris Adibris are told in the Torah that Hashem came and said that the Ten Commandments, it says on the seventh day, what does it say about it? It says that it's the Shabbos, Hashem created the, 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 the world in six days, and on the seventh day he rested, that's why you need to make a Shabbos for Hashem. When the Torah repeats the Aseris Adibris in the book of Devarim, then the Torah says, and you should remember that Hashem took you out of Egypt. So it seems to be that there's two reasons for the Shabbos. There's a reason that we remember that Hashem created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And then there's a reason that Hashem took us out of Egypt. We should remember that we were slaves in Egypt and Hashem took us out and that's why he commanded us to do the Shabbos. So there's two, there's two reasons for the Shabbos comes out. Bereshis Mitzrayim. The origin of the world, the, the beginning of the world, Shem rested, and Mitzrayim. So Rashi is telling us here that the reason for resting on the seventh year, it's a Shabbos for Hashem, says Rashi, and it also says Shabbos for Hashem in the Shabbos of Bereshis. Rashi calls it here Shabbos of Bereshis because he wants to tell us the same way that Shabbos where it says Shabbos Lashem Elikecha, it's because Hashem rested on the sixth day. Similarly, we need to rest on the seventh year to remind us not of going out of Egypt, which is also an aspect of Shabbos, but the aspect of Shabbos, where Shabbos is, Shabbos Bereshis. Shabbos is a reminder of the beginning of creation. And this is what Rashi is trying to tell us that this seventh year has to be Lashem Hashem, for the sake of Hashem. The sake of Hashem to remind us that He created the world. And that's the seventh year, just as the seventh day reminds us about Shabbos to Hashem. He created the world in six days. The seventh day He rested. Similarly, the six years of work remind us about this, also remind us about six days of creation, seven day rested. It's the seven, the cycle of the seven reminds us back about Hashem's creation of the world. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's, um, 
let's see the Rebbe, how the Rebbe explains Taka. Why are there two reasons? How do, how, how, do we, how do we reconcile the fact that in the first Aserah Sadibris, he says, keep the Shabbos because Hashem rested on the seventh day. And the second time the Aserah Sadibris are repeated in the book of Devarim, it says, Shabbos because Hashem um, um, took you out of Egypt. And that's why I told you to do the Shabbos. So first, let me introduce something else, and that is that there's a a a wondrous, a, a, a difficult to understand Rashi in the in the in, in the parsha of Mishpatim, which says it says on the seventh day you shall rest. And Rashi quotes from a mechilta that says even on the seventh year, the sabbatical year, don't uproot the Shabbos bereishis. Don't uproot the daily, the weekly Shabbos by saying, Rashi quotes this and says, don't say, Rashi says, that since the whole year is called Shabbos, that's why I won't do Shabbos Bereshis, I won't do the weekly Shabbos. No, that's why the Pasuk says, on the seventh day, even while you're doing the seventh year, the seventh day you'll have to rest. Says the Rebbe, this is wondrous. Why would we think that Shabbos, that the weekly Shabbos would become uprooted just because the whole year is called Shabbos. If anything, on the contrary, if the whole year is called Shabbos, even more Shabbos here. That this that doesn't say, it's just my uh, extrapolation. <laughs> Why would you take away from the Shabbos on a year that's called Shabbos? Does that have, uh, we just said that there's two reasons for Shabbos. There's two concepts in Shabbos. The Zeichel and the Bereshis, they're a memory of creation. And that's why every Shabbos is really called Shabbos Bereshis, the Shabbos of beginning, it reminds us of the beginning. And the remembrance of going out of Egypt. Rashi explains that what's the connection of Yetzirah Mitzrayim going to Egypt to Shabbos, said Rashi, in the second, the second time that Seres Adibris are said, where Rashi explains, what does that mean that we do the Shabbos to remember going out of Egypt? And that, for that purpose, I took you out. That you should be a servant of Hashem and keep his mitzvahs. In other words, says the Rebbe. Here's how they both interrelate. The, the, the creation reason and the liberation from Egypt reason. Same way, the reason that Hashem commanded us, the reason for the commandment, for the obligation to keep Shabbos, which Shabbos is a remembrance for the six days of creation. That is what Shabbos is. That's the whole purpose of Shabbos. The basis for holding us accountable responsible and, and, and almost like avodim, like, like servants that re are required to do the Shabbos, which is reminiscent of, reminds us of creation, is because Hashem took us out of Egypt. Zecher, the, the whole concept of Shabbos, the whole meaning of Shabbos is remembering Hashem created the world. Seven days, six days he worked, seventh day he rested. Reminds us that Hashem is Everything. The reason why we are obligated, the obligation of the mitzvah of Shabbos, which is reminding us Hashem's seventh day rest, is because Hashem took us out of Egypt. So therefore, I would think that perhaps the year of Shabbos, the whole year is reminding us of going out of Egypt. Why do we have to have the Shabbos every week? If the Shabbos is all about reminding us seven days, sorry, let me go back. The whole year is reminding us that Hashem created the world in six days. On the seventh day, He rested. The whole, the whole, because that is what Shabbos is, and therefore that is what the we just we just ascertained that Rashi has told us that is what the seventh year is. So if that is the whole content and the whole uh, meaning of the seventh year. That it's exactly the same concept as the seventh day, reminding us of Hashem's creation, Shabbos Bereshis. So why do I need a weekly Shabbos when the whole year is that concept that Hashem created in six days and rested on the seventh? So the Torah comes and tells us, still in all, we need to have the weekly Shabbos. Why? Because even though the whole year is called Shabbos, but in actuality, the rest is not the same quality of rest of Shabbos. We're still able to do various things of work. We just don't work the fields. But all the other uh, things that we rest from on Shabbos, we don't rest from the entire year of the Shemitah. So therefore, we have this still the weekly Shabbos where every Jew is forbidden in all kinds of work, which reminds us 
uh, of the Shabbos. As well, there are positive mitzvahs on the Shabbos, not just refraining from work. There's the Kiddush, there's the imbuing the Shabbos with, uh, with, with, with content and meaning. You have the positive aspects of Shabbos, which even the year that's called Shabbos, where we refrain from working, the field, A, it's only the field. Second of all, it wouldn't give us the aspects of Shabbos, which are the positive, um, holy, uh, adding holiness aspects of Shabbos. Okay. I'd like to uh, pick up on, on, on one of the concepts mentioned here in the footnote. Because I believe this will be helpful to all of us in, in understanding parts of the davening, also the Kiddush. That is, that in explaining, the Rebbe very, very um, packed, uh, wrapped up this, this uh, almost a, uh, 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 I wouldn't say paradox, but, but this, this, this issue that we have between the, the reason for Shabbos, the way it's brought in the two, in the uh, two sets of Aser Sadibis, the way they're related in the Torah. One says it's because Hashem rested on the seventh day. One says it's because Hashem took us out of Egypt. The Rebbe said, very simple, the Shabbos is all about the seventh day, that Hashem created heaven and earth, and this reminds us that Hashem rested on the seventh day, that's why we rest. The obligation, Hashem creates an obligation on us, and the obligation is because He took us out of Egypt, and we were servants to Pharaoh, and now we became His servants, so to speak. He took us out in order to obligate us in the mitzvahs. Which mitzvah? Primarily, to do the Shabbos, which teaches us about six days of creation on the seventh day of Shem Resta. Um, the Rebbe quotes from his grandfather's grandfather, who wrote a, a Rabbi Avram David Lavut, who was Rabbi of Nikolaev, and he wrote a, a, a explanation on the nuances of the Siddur of the Alter Rebbe. And he points out there, I'll share with you, you may have noticed, first of all, in the Kiddush, say Kiddush Friday night, May have noticed it says Asher Kedushana uh, b'Mitzvah Sabbat Sabbat. Thank you, Hashem, who has sanctified us with His mitzvahs and desired us, and He gave us the Shabbos. And the Shabbos He He, he bequeathed, He gave us the Shabbos as a remembrance of the Maisa Bedeshis, the creation and the beginning of heaven and earth. And then He says it's the beginning of all the holy days, a remembrance for the going out of Egypt. And here, he, what, the way he learns here is that the Shabbos is the beginning of all holy days. Holy days also includes Yom Tif. As we said, Shabbos in Sefirah Sa'imer actually means the day of rest of Pesach. Because Pesach in also, Yom Tif is also in a form called Shabbos. So when it says, Mimacharas Shabbos, the day after Shabbos, it means the day after Pesach. Because if it would mean the Shabbos of the week of the year, they didn't tell us which Shabbos. So we understand that it must be in the day of rest, in which day of rest, Pesach. So definitely Yom Tov is also Mikroi Kedish, days of holiness. Shabbos is the first of the series of days of holiness. All the other days of holiness are all about going out of Egypt. This Rebbe points out in the Sicha that Zeichel, Yitzhiyaz Mitzrayim, is not unique to Shabbos. All the holidays are all about remembering going out of Egypt. Pesach reminds us going out of Egypt, obviously. Sukkot is the way Hashem protected us from the clouds of glory. Shavuos was... Part of going out of Egypt was receiving the Torah. So you see here in the, you see here in the, um, in the Kiddush, that the Zeichel of Maisei and then we say it's the beginning of all the holy days, which also those holy days are remembering going out of Egypt. Something else you may have picked up, the Rebbe's grandfather's grandfather explains this, in the Shachris, in Nusuch of the Rebbe, by night we say, das yomi kerosa, in the Yisim Chuvah Malchuscha, that Hashem has made us joyous with the Shabbos. He called the Shabbos a special day, a remembrance for the times of creation. The next morning in Shachris, we omit saying it's a remembrance of the day of creation. The reason for that is because there, in the in the in the uh, bracha of the Shmona Esrei in the Amida of Shabbos day, it says that Hashem gave the two tablets to Moshe's hands, and in those luchas, it says, Shemiras Shabbos, about keeping Shabbos. The word Shomer and Zohar were interchanged, were said at the same time in the Ten Commandments. But in the book of Yisroi, 
in the book of Shemais, in the first time the Ten Commandments are related, it says, Zohar is Yerma Shabbos. Remember the Shabbos? In the book of Vaischan, on the second time the Aser Sadibris are said, are repeated, it says, Shomer is Yerma Shabbos. Remember the Shabbos. And in that second set of Aser Sadibris, remember, what does it say about the Shabbos? Do the Shabbos because I took you out of Egypt. It doesn't say the reason there because of going out of, because of the creation. Even though, of course, Shabbos is about creation as we just established. But since it says here in the morning davening that speaks about the writing of the Shmira Shabbos, the word Shomer, which that's the same word used in the in the counting of the Aser Sadibris in the book of Devarim. So therefore, where, 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 where it says in the davening, and on the seventh day, he made it holy, he called it his special day. He doesn't say a remembrance to my Sabadeshis. Not to explicitly bring up that reason, which says in the first Aser Sadibris, where here he's referring back to the way that Shabbos is written in the second Aser Of course, going on, and in the Musaf it says, Zechel HaMai because that is the essence of Shabbos, is a remembrance to my Sabadeshis. So, I thought, although this is, it's, it's, it, this is really what comes out of the footnotes, but uh, because it's so relevant to our, our, our daily davening, our, our weekly davening, and the weekly Kiddush, I thought this is a, a practical point that would be nice to glean from the Sikha. So just to sum up, uh, uh, a recap. The Teras Kainim says that this is a halachic uh, 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 piece of information here. The Shabbos of the sabbatical year needs to be learned from the Shabbos of the week. Shabbos of the week, there's no obligation to take it on earlier. Again, Minat Torah from the Torah. Rabbinically, we take it a little bit earlier not to get to make any confusion, not to come in late, God forbid. But biblically, it starts when it starts, finishes when it finishes. Similarly, the seventh year. You don't have to worry if you plant it in advance. Again, rabbinically, there are, there are, by the way, restrictions. We have to stop planting in advance. But biblically, from the Torah, seventh year starts, you have to rest. Same as the Shabbos, Shabbos comes, you stop. Seventh year comes, you stop. Again, Midir Abonan, don't take this halachically because you have to look in, in, in Shulchan Aruch, the Rabbonan added... Um, so that people shouldn't, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't create, you know. The Rabbanon added things, not to go into this, uh, the details of Shvius right now, the, the seventh law. It's very applicable in Israel today. But for now, we'll leave it at, at uh, learning Pshat in the Pasuk. Rashi says, this Shabbos, L'Shem Hashem is telling us something radically different. Rashi says, this Shabbos is telling, the word Shabbos Hashem is to tell us the Shabbos has to be for the sake of Hashem. The same way it is in Shabbos Bereshis. Although Shabbos has two aspects to it, that it reminds us of the Shabbos Bereshis of the beginning of creation, and it also has an aspect where it reminds us of going out of Egypt. What we're remembering here in the seventh year is creation. And the Rebbe gave us an explanation here, and he quotes that basically this is what the Ramban, Nachmanides, brings in the name of Rambam from Meir and Nebuchim, Guide for the Perplexed, that the two aspects of Shabbos, it's really the Shabbos is all about remembering creation, Going out of Egypt is what has created upon us the incumbents, the responsibility to need to, to the obligation to fulfill the Shabbos, which is all about remembering Hashem's creation, uh, being the creator of heaven and earth and resting on the seventh day. Okay, now the Rebbe goes and says, from the Yain of Torah, from the, so to speak, wine of Torah, from what we can learn on an inspirational way, what this teaches us is as following, that the Shviyas and Shabbos are correlated. What's special about and unique about the rest and the Kedusha, the sanctity of Shabbos, is that it, it totally envelops the person with all of his things. Usually during the week, eating is a function that needs to be done only in order to give you nutrition. It's not about, not about enjoyment. We live, we, we don't live to eat. We eat in order to live, to serve Hashem. On the contrary, if a person is indulgent and is only thinking about the taste, not thinking about the nutrition, it's, in other words, he's not focusing on the, the service of Hashem he's doing through eating, Tanya points out, Tanya chapter chapter, chapter, seven, uh, chapter 7 and uh, elsewhere, it's actually, it becomes, it becomes in a sense forbidden. Something that's, not, that's redundant has no place. But on Shabbos, even those things that are just pleasurable, they become a mitzvah. In other words, the Kedusha of Shabbos, the holiness of Shabbos, is so, is, is, is so pervasive, it permeates and it attaches and, it, and it, 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 it spreads, so to speak, its glow, even on the physical things that we do. So on Shabbos, 
We eat in a way that we have pleasure. We have to make it a pleasurable day. And Rashi wants to hint to us that the same way it says by Shabbos, the Shabbos is to Hashem, and that has its effect even on the mundane things of this world that they now become imbued with a certain holiness of Shabbos. So similarly, this sabbatical year is not just about refraining, withholding, withdrawing from doing our earthly, our farmer tasks of harvesting and reaping and planting and, and, and plowing. But there's also the concept, just like on Shabbos, to bring the holiness into the mundane. Where do we have that? There is a concept, actually, that there's a concept called Kedusha of Shviz, the holiness of the fruits of the seventh year. You know, you're not allowed to... Um, while you're not allowed to plant, plow, plant, because fruit trees are still giving fruit. They don't, they're not resting. Those fruits, you're only allowed to pick. First of all, they become ownerless. Your fields basically become ownerless. Anybody can come and take. You're allowed to pick for yourself as well. But whatever the case is, those fruits that grow in the seventh year, are harvested in the seventh year, they are called Kodesh. They have a certain level of holiness. Practically, and this is even in Israel today, what will that mean? If it's fruit that can be eaten, it has to be eaten. You can't just, you can't use it for something that's demeaning. So if it's fit for human consumption, you can't give it to your animals. And you can't just trash it. So in Israel, they have special uh, uh, garbage bins during the, uh, the year of Shvius, where, let's say, leftover fruit that was picked on the seventh year is, is not just trashed together with, uh, to go to the garbage dump. It's put in a separate basket, and there are people that come and collect it, and it goes to be uh, gently discarded in a respectable way. There's a certain aspect of Kedusha. This is what Rashi is telling us, that you can bring Kedusha into the mundane, just like on Shabbos. Even your physical eating of a delicious piece of meat, the pleasure of it is imbued with the holiness of Shabbos. Similarly, on the seventh year, just like Shabbos Bereish is, you bring holiness into the actual physical mundane earthliness of your fruit. And that's similar to the concept we know, which is in Bechol Derachecha Do'ehu, in the book of Mishle, by Shlem HaMelech, it says, in all your ways, you should know Him, Him being Hashem. We bring Hashem even into our earthly, mundane, physical behavior. We imbue it and make sure that it's all focused on doing the wish of Hashem. Why do we do what we do in our material life? Because Hashem, it's a part of our service of Hashem. And in this way, we bring Kedush, we bring holiness into our... So that aspect is brought out from the Shabbos in, in, in the most palpable way. We all live with Shabbos, doing things on Shabbos, which on Shabbos becomes a mitzvah during the week. May not, not necessarily. We see how the Shabbos permeates even the physical. This too, this aspect also, it comes into being the seventh year. According to this, we can understand that really there's also something to be learned from Shviz. There's some virtue and benefit, advantage of the seventh year even over the seventh day. What is that? When we talk about this spiritual concept here, why is that? The concept is like this, says the Rebbe. On, on, on Shabbos, the world has an elevation. And we know this because the, we, we know the Gemara speaks about a river called Sambation. Sambation is a river which six days a week, it churns up rocks. And the tradition is that that's where the 10 tribes were exiled beyond this river. Well, we can't cross the river. A whole six days of the week, it's churning rocks. It's impenetrable. Seventh day, it stops. By seventh day, we're not allowed to cross the river. It's Shabbos. So, Sambation, this river Sambation is an indication that the world itself is elevated. It's a physical world, but on Shabbos, it rests. Shabbos has its effect on the world, not by coming down to the Shabbos, but actually the actual world is elevated. That's why we can't even do the, the works on Shabbos. Work on Shabbos is forbidden because the world has an elevation. It's inappropriate when there's this kind of re uh, revelation of Hashem to do anything else than bask in His presence. You can't just do work. So, also, even our physical things have in a sense become elevated and now they also get enveloped by holiness. So the world goes up. What happens on the year of the sabbatical years, the world doesn't go up. 
what happens is that the Shabbos affects even the world the way it is. The sabbatical year affects the earthliness of the earth. Even as it is. Right? We Even on the seventh year, we have the seventh day. So the six days of the week, of the entire seventh year, we're allowed to do all kinds of work. The world hasn't elevated. What happens, though, is that in that unelevated world, in that mundane world, we're now doing a Shabbos, a sabbatical year, which tells us something, um, which tells us, I'm just looking here at a footnote of the Rebbe, that's why the Rebbe says that bring the Shabbos aspect into the earth is a very big pulling down that's why it can only be done in Israel. The laws of Shemitah of the sabbatical year only apply in Eretz Yisrael because Eretz Yisrael is in itself inherently more related to Kedusha. On, on the seventh year, Hashem tells us, make even, but it's, it's inherently more Kaddish, but we still do mundane work in it. Comes the seventh year and Hashem says, this is an opportunity to bring holiness into that Eretz Yisrael, that Israel level of mundaneness. And perhaps the Rebbe says this is the reason, at least in the inner meaning, in the panemius, deeper uh, understanding, why there are some opinions that say that the Shemitah these days is rabbinic based, not Midar Isa. Why would that be? Because to pull down the Shabbos aspect into the mundaneness of the earth, the physical earth of Eretz Yisrael, would have required the, the presence of the Beis Hamikdash, which already brings a, a revelation of godliness that is not available to us today into the physical land of Israel. But this is a, a, an argument amongst poskim, amongst uh, whether or not today Shemitah is biblical or rabbinic, but this would help us understand what the nuances, at least in, in the Kabbalistic aspect of the Indian, we're bringing down the Kiddusha to the, to the earth. The earth needs to be at some kind of a level to be able to, 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 be able to have a connection to it. But Shabbos, the, 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 the worlds are going up, and that's why even our physical things become imbued with holiness. On, on, on the year of Shemitah, the worlds have some kind of innocence, but pretty much they're still earth. In Israel, it's holy earth, and we have the opportunity to pull down the holiness into the earthliness. What does it tell us? It tells us about our ability to serve Hashem in all of our things, even in our mundane things. It gives us an inspiration and the energy. More than that, <coughs> There's even a law that this pertains to the food only eatable by animals. You mentioned before that food that's edible by humans, you can't give to animals on the Shavias, on the seventh year, because they have a certain holiness. It needs to be used for the highest level that you could use it for. What happens if it's animal food? You're allowed to give it to your animals, but you're only allowed to feed it to your domesticated animals when there's still a yield available in the, food, in, in the field for all kinds of... Uh, uh, for all kinds of, uh, what should we call it? For all kinds of roaming beasts. Once there's no yield in the field available for for taking by wild, by wild beasts, you cannot go and take it now domesticated or take it for your own use. In other words, you're not allowed to hoard, not hoard, you're not allowed to uh, uh, harvest the, the shviest fruits for your own use so long. The only time you are, you're only allowed to keep as much for your own use, as when there's still stuff available for everybody to take. So we see here a certain correlation. Animal and human seem to be not so, when are you allowed to keep for yourself? Only when there's also food, that identical food available to be taken even for the, even for the beasts. So that equation, that, that equalness, we're very different than animals, but in the face of great holiness, we're all we're all equally un unworthy, so to speak. We're all equally distant from that level of holiness. So what it's telling us is that there's a great holiness that we're able to bring down to the mundane aspects of life. And this is the teaching that the, the concept of Shviyas teaches us, not just in the seventh year, but in general, it teaches us about our service of Hashem. Even when it's outside Israel and even in the time of uh, exile, and in general, this is the message that the holiness of a person, his connectivity to Hashem, needs to be not just when he does obviously holy things, learning and davening, but even when he does even physical things, mundane things, 
Even those, we also have to pull down the holiness into those activities. Just as in the same, the six years, and here the Rebbe says something that I will, uh, that he quotes uh, in, as a closing thought, but the Rebbe quotes it from Tzamach Tzedek, who brings from, uh, uh, the Rebbe quotes it from Panim Yofes, here is written by, uh, by Pinchas Balafla, and the Rebbe footnotes it to the Tzamach Tzedek, brings it, he says like this, what is it, how does the seventh, seven years work? Seven years works like this. I'll paraphrase that um, because of the seventh year will come the blessing for um, for the uh, sorry because of that the way the seventh year works is like this it's the dearest year and it's like a um, a big barrel. First you pour into the big vessel, and then you pour into the other six smaller vessels. The Shvi is, the seventh year, is the year of receptacle of big blessing of Hashem. It's a Shabbos to Hashem. And that pours into the other six days of the week. It's beautiful. The seventh year is the, is the source. It's where the, all the Baruch is collected, and then from that goes to six, six years. So similarly, says the Rebbe, the same way that the six years receive from the seventh year, as the analogy, as you take first from a big vessel and pour into small vessels, similarly, we have to take from the Shabbos, take from the Shabbos from the holiness and pour it into all of our mundane things. This is the way we make our mundane holy. Maybe merit the, uh, this is not in the Sicha, but... Uh, that uh, she married the seventh year. It's the year of Mashiach. All the best.